Okay, so I've got the belt off the Van de Graaff here, so I can just spin the Van de Graaff by hand. I just wanted to show how this motor just spins right up um, when you just spin this by hand a couple times. So I'll stop it, a couple spins there, and this thing just spins right up. So very, very sensitive electrostatic motor. This is by far the most sensitive electrostatic motor I've ever created. So. Okay, so I want to show this motor running some charged water. You can see that as I bring the water near the motor, the motor starts running. And because this particular electrostatic motor is so sensitive, you can run it on charged water for quite a while. It's, it's really interesting. So you can see that it goes right along here. I'll move the water away and let it stop. And I'll approach it with the water again, and you'll see it start back up. There it goes. All right, so this is the Mini Atma motor. I want to go over a few of the design details here. Um, this motor's very easy to assemble. It came about because this original Atma motor is just a bear to build. You know, I've got years of experience in this, and this was a real challenge even for myself to build. Trying to get the precision on the rotor and everything was kind of a nightmare. So this particular uh, set of 3D printed parts, you can get, find all the STL files for this at laserhacker.com. I'll provide a link in this video description so you can go check that out. I'll also put uh, links to where I got the other um, parts, like the bearings, um, this copper tape that actually fits right inside these little uh, indents here, printed into the rotor itself. Um, this particular motor is designed to use a standard utility knife blade, and the utility knife blade actually slides in. It's a perfect fit here, and it just slides into, uh, you got to be very careful handling these blades. These things are sharp. But uh, yes, you can see it just slides into there. It slides very uh, easily, at least on the Orion Delta print settings. So this gives you some adjustability. So once you assemble this motor, you can adjust these blades up and down and get a nice close fit close to the rotor there. And uh, that just gives a great corona discharge off this blade. This is the most sensitive electrostatic motor I've ever created. So anyway, the parts will be at laserhacker.com. Um, it's really simple to assemble. Once you get this thing uh, assembled together, you want, first of all, a couple other uh, points to keep in mind. You want the bearings to have a little bit of play in them. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a little bit of slop in the bearings this way. If you crunch down tight on the bearings, you're going to put a lot of pressure on those bearings and there'll be a lot more resistant resistance on the motor. You should be able to spin this thing and just have the most free spinning uh, rotor you can imagine possible. So you don't want any uh, pressure gumming up your bearings. A lot of the holes on this may need to be reamed out a little bit larger depending on your printer and, and the settings. So. Okay, as far as connecting the wiring, there's a very convenient thing with the utility knife blade. You've got these two cutouts here, and if you take the wire, run it through the cutouts and do a little jog here like this, and then come out here and come out the hole on this side, you can actually pull this wire tight under tension, come over here to your uh, final outputs, and the wire will hold just with the tension. I then put wire glue over the wire. And that's just a graphite with adhesive. Uh, Radio Shack sells a wire glue. I'll try to find a link, put it at laserhacker.com. But you can see that the construction details on this motor are incredibly simple. There really is not anything uh, overly complex or hard to build in this particular mini Atmo motor design. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Let's all keep building. Let's all keep experimenting, keep sharing uh, what we find. And uh, yeah, it's fun stuff.